Have you been watching the news lately? Our planet is being increasingly devastated by killer earthquakes, fires, storms, tornadoes, floods, hurricanes, typhoons, tsunamis, uh, and a whole host of other disasters, uh, including the brutal attacks of Islamic terrorists. What's going on on this planet? What's happening? Does the Bible have anything to say about these disasters? Yes, it does. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 9, God's word says, when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. I want to tell you, God's judgments are in the world right now. And this is the time for us to be learning righteousness. Righteousness has to do with what's right and what's wrong. It has to do with the Ten Commandments, which define sin and show us what's right and what's wrong. Uh, it, al it also has to do with ultimately with the righteousness of our blessed Savior, Jesus Christ who gave his life, for, his life for us on the cross so he could clothe us with his uh, forgiveness and his perfect robe of righteousness. Because of what's happening right now, uh, morally, uh, immorally around the world, God's judgments are here and they are increasing. And uh, we've, we're going to be seeing things in the future that we can't, we can't even imagine. Uh, bigger judgments than, than we've, we can even possibly uh, conceive of. In the book Evangels on page 29, it says, Oh, that God's people had a sense of the impending destruction of thousands of cities now almost wholly given to idolatry. Can, can you imagine this? I mean, uh, it's just try to comprehend waking up one day and discovering that the entire city of Los Angeles, I've got relatives in Los Angeles, or New York, or Chicago, or Moscow, or Mexico City, uh, that these cities were just wiped off the map. I hate to say it, but Bible prophecy predicts uh, that these kind of things are going to be happening in the days ahead. So what should we be doing? What should God's people be doing as we await the fulfillment of God's final prophecies in his word? Back to Evangelism, page 29. It says that the time is near when large cities will be swept away and all should be warned, all should be warned of these coming judgments. Uh, at Whitehorse Media, we take these words very, very seriously. We've read them, we've pondered them. Uh, we see these words as the voice of God to our souls. And we want to do our part in warning the cities and warning the people around the world as much as we, as much as we can. That's why we've created a, a new website, which is warnthecities.com. That website is about to stream a live event on July 23rd, based in Nashville, Tennessee. And I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Plus, that website has resources, uh, incredible, eye-opening, powerful resources to help you to do your part in warning others. Why Nashville? Why did we pick that location? Well, there's a s significant reason for that. Uh, in 1904, Ellen White had a dream, an amazing dream, and this is exactly what, uh, what she said. Let me read this to you. She said, when I was at Nashville, I had been speaking to the people. And in the night season, there was an immense ball of fire that came right from heaven and settled in Nashville. There were flames going out like arrows from that ball. Houses were being consumed. Houses were tottering and falling. Some of our people were standing there and they were saying, it is just as we expected. We expected this, they said. Others were wringing their hands in agony and crying to God for mercy. You knew, they said, you knew that this was coming and you never said a word to warn us. They seemed as though they would almost tear them to pieces, those who were expecting this, to think that they had never told them or given them any warning at all. We don't want to be among the people that don't give a warning. What I just read to you from that 1904 dream, in 2015 in July, those words were released by the LNG White Estate for the first time to the public and to the Seventh-day Adventist world. And, and Adventists have been re uh, reading this material for the last year. They've been pondering these words. They've been uh, thinking about this. Their hearts have been stirred. Uh, there are Seventh-day Adventist pastors in Nashville, many of them who have been stirred by reading these very words. And they've been asking themselves, what should we do about what was in that dream and about what's coming, what is our responsibility. In the providence of God, he has opened an amazing door 
for a unique Warn the Cities convocation to take place in Nashville at the Nashville First Seventh-day Adventist Church on July 23rd. I'll be there, I'll be speaking. My associate Tim Saxton will be speaking as well. And there's gonna be four presentations. The first one is on the coming judgments of God based on the Word of God, based on the Bible. The second uh, talk has to do with the parable of Matthew chapter 25, the parable of the wise and foolish virgins, and it's called wise or foolish. Which ones are we going to be? The third one is called Fire in the Sky that looks closely at other details that were in that 1904 dream and a follow-up 1906 dream. And then there'll be a panel discussion and a Q&A where I myself will be on the, the uh, platform plus my associate Tim Saxton plus the pastor of the Nashville First Church, which is uh, Pastor Melvin Santos plus David Hartman, Pastor Hartman, who is the ministerial director of the Kentucky Tennessee Conference. We will be there uh, primarily to look at the Bible to pray and to discuss uh, the dreams and discuss what the Bible says and to seek the Lord's guidance and His will as to what we should be doing uh, in these final days to do our part to warn the cities. And the good news for you is that that event is going to be streamed live on July 23rd right from our website, warnthecities.com. Uh, on October 6th, I'll also be on 3ABN. Uh, Whitehorse Media will be there and we'll be discussing this live uh, with, uh, I believe it will be Danny Shelton or one of the hosts, and this will go out all around the world so that we can discuss what's happening, what the Bible says, and the doors that God is opening to help to spread His Word in these last days. Let me make something very clear, just for the record. Uh, although Ellen White did dream and she did say that a ball of fire would settle in Nashville, uh, we at Whitehorse Media firmly believe uh, that she was equally clear, and she was, that it's not just Nashville that's going to get hit by the judgments of God. But God's, judgment, God's judgments are going to be falling uh, on cities around the world because of their intense wickedness. And we can see that wickedness growing uh, every day. Every day we look at the news and see what's happening on this planet. I'm going to read again from Evangelism, page 29. That statement says, Oh, that God's people had a sense of the impending destruction of thousands of cities, not just one, now almost wholly given over to idolatry. The time is near when large cities will be just swept away, uh, wiped off the map, and all should be warned of these coming judgments. We hope that the July 23rd convention in Nashville <clears throat> will ignite a movement. It will spark a revival among Seventh-day Adventists and, uh, and others around the world who love uh, Jesus and who want to do their part in warning others about what is coming. And above all, we want to lift him up. We want to lift up Jesus. We want to lift up his love, his grace, his mercy, uh, and his forgiveness while time is still open for people to repent and give their lives to Christ. That July 23rd event will also be made available on DVD, and it will be posted on warnthecities.com. Uh, on that website, Whitehorse Media also has significant resources to help you to do your part. We have a brand new book called God Speaks Before the End of the World. It's a little pocketbook. It introduces Ellen White's writings positively to the public and helps them to understand, helps people to understand that uh, God raised this woman up as an end time messenger to point people to his word and to help them to understand what the Bible has to say about these last days. Then we have a uh, track, a sharing track called Fire from the Sky that goes into details specifically about that 1904 dream. Uh, and then we have another track, uh, and this is for the general public, and it's called The Coming Judgments of God. This is a uh, easy to read track. I sent it out recently to about 14 of my relatives. I'm starting to get responses. I just got a text today from uh, my stepmother. And she said that she read it over and over again, and she was deeply impressed with the information that's there. Uh, that track is only based on the Bible, only scriptures from Isaiah, from Revelation, from other uh, passages, helping people to understand what the Bible says about the future. We also have a DVD called Earth's Final Crisis, What You Must Know to Survive. It's about 50 minutes. Uh, it's very powerful. It deals with the final events, the mark of the beast, uh, the coming judgments of God, the last deceptions of the devil, and the second coming of Jesus. And then we also have another book called God's, God's Last Message, Christ Our Righteousness. This book zeroes in exclusively on the subject of Jesus Christ as our righteousness, the good news of the gospel, and how he can clothe us with his own precious white robe of forgiveness and empower us by his grace 
to become Ten Commandment Keepers. And then one more resource, we have a brand new book that just came out, uh, published by Remnant Publications, and it's called The Coming Judgments of God. Uh, it's a little pocketbook, easy to share. It's entirely for the public, and it contains new information about America's moral demise, about the rising uh, LGBTQ movement, about how Islamic terrorism fits into the picture, about climate change myths where uh, scientists and theologians are misinterpreting these weather-related disasters uh, and they don't have anything to do with the judgments of God as described in the Bible. And above all, this new book uh, focuses on the character of God, what the Bible says, what Exodus says, what the New Testament says about God's character of love and mercy and forgiveness and grace, and yet also about his justice and his judgments. And it stresses very clearly that in, in Scripture, God uses uh, the natural elements of, of this world. He can even use, uh, he can even use people that are, are living in sin and that are radical. Uh, somehow, he can use many different elements to bring his just judgments upon a world that is lost in sin as a wake-up call to try to bring them back to God, back to Jesus, back to the Bible, before it's too late. All of these are now available from White Horse Media. One more thought. Uh, in the book, The Great Controversy, which many of you are familiar with, on page 464, there's a very powerful quote that many of us have read before, and this is what it says. It says, before the final visitation of God's judgments upon the earth, there will be among the people of the Lord such a revival of primitive godliness as has not been witnessed since apostolic times. The spirit and the power of God will be poured out upon his people. That's Great Controversy, page 464. Uh, I've recently been pondering that quote, and I've come to the strong conviction that the uh, revival that we need so desperately, based on that quote, is also going to be connected to an awareness among the people of God that his judgments are about to fall upon this world. In 1906, Ellen White had a second dream about large balls of fire striking the earth. Referring to that event, she said, and I'm quoting, I was instructed that destruction hath gone forth, has gone forth upon cities. The word of the Lord will be fulfilled. Read and understand, for it will surely be. And then she specifically refers to Revelation chapter 18, chapter 19, and chapter 21. And then she wrote, there were voices proclaiming the words of these chapters. With great power was the message given. Now, now listen to this. Uh, Revelation 18 verse 1 describes another angel coming down from heaven with great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And that's, that's describing God's final revival among his people. And then the rest of the chapter describes the judgments of God to fall upon Babylon. So both the Bible and the spirit of prophecy connect the final revival among the people of God with our awareness of the coming judgments of God and the importance that we need, the importance of our giving this message while time is still uh, remaining, where mercy is still available to lost sinners. God wants you and he wants me to be part of this revival. He wants to use us to spark and to ignite a final revival among God's people that will lead to the loud cry and the last message and the return of Jesus Christ. So we invite you to check out warnthecities.com to learn more. A flyer with the exact times for the Nashville presentations uh, will be there. So you can look at those exact times and you can watch the event live on warnthecities.com on July 23rd. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 9. I started with this verse and I'll end with this verse. I didn't read the beginning of the verse, but I will right now. Isaiah said, With my soul I have desired you in the night. Yes, by my spirit within me I will seek you early. I will seek you. When your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Now is the time for us to learn righteousness, for us to understand what's right and what's wrong, the holiness of the law of God, uh, and above all, uh, the righteousness of Jesus, our blessed Savior.
who gave his life for us, who gave everything for us so that he could forgive us and clothe us with the robe of his righteousness. We need to understand the character of God as described in the Bible. Jesus Christ took the justice in Gethsemane and on the cross. He took the justice of God against sin, which we deserve, so that he could grant us his mercy, which we do not deserve. And he did it all so that we can return to God, that we can love him, and we can be with him forever and ever and ever in a brand new world where there's no more terrorism, no more disasters, no more sin, no more crime, uh, no more black versus white rage. Uh, this, this is all going to be gone. It's all going to be gone and there will be love forever. So while mercy lingers, let's do our part right now to warn the cities and as many people as possible before it's too late.